Chapter Thirteen, I School Reception. Samantha was sitting in the corner of the television room, shooting a length of poor silver material. <coughs> It was seven o'clock on Thursday evening, evening, just after the prep, and the room was packed with girls, all discussing the Valentine's dance on the following night. Mariona was at the center of it. She had brought down armfuls of dresses, and everyone was taking turns trying them on. Mariona deliberately came up to Samantha, dressed in an over-the-top number that didn't suit her at all. Trying to get that finished for tomorrow tonight, she demanded, flicking one of her hanging veils in Samantha's face. Samantha ignored her, just went on sewing. She wasn't very good at needlework. But she was taking a knot of scare. What a shame your boyfriends won't be there," says Mariola, probing for Samantha's weakness. Then, when she didn't get a reaction, well, I suppose it's for the best. He probably fell out. A place Samantha carefully thread the leather legs of thread to her needle. Tell you what," persisted Mariola. You come along tomorrow night, and I'll introduce you to some boys who are, shall we say, don't belong the proletariat. What's going on here? Said an icy voice. Mariona turned and went down like a brick balloon. Paula was standing in the doorway, wearing her best prefaced expression. <laughs> Nothing, Paula. Mariona said, "I wasn't aware that this." Has been turned into a fitting room," said Paula. <laughs> "We were just trying on a few dresses for tomorrow. Well, go and put them away," says Paula. "Hurry up!" Mariola looked mutinous, but she stopped up to do as she was told. Paula sat down beside Samantha. "You don't have to fight my battles for me," said Samantha quietly. "I'm just doing my job," Samantha said. Paula. Now what's this nonsense? I hear about you lot coming tomorrow night. It's not nonsense. Don't be so silly. Everybody comes to the Valentine's dance. I want you to stay in and get this finished," said Samantha. Paula <laughs> examined the dress on which Samantha was working. Mm, expensive bit of material, silk, isn't it? Yes, it's an old party dress of mine. Not so old," said Paula. Was this for tomorrow night? Is that why you're not coming? No, it's for something more important than that or dance," said Samantha. "Though you do have to, something you could wear." Samantha smiled to herself. "I expect I meant," she said. "Well, come then for me," urged Paula. Samantha heaved a sigh. "If you say it like that, I've got to," she said. He, she held up the silver dress. I suppose I could finish this another night. There's not much left to do, is there? Not on this, no," said Samantha. "I still need a nice piece of heavy material, though," asked Miss Mart, the little work teacher. She wants to know what it's for. Samantha looked up at the school secretary, but put her hand around the door. "Oh no! Now what?" she muttered. "How do you know it's for you?" demanded Paula. It's always for me," said Samantha. "Resigned." Samantha Stevens called the secretary. "Yes, Miss Williams, Miss Donisha's study, right away, please." Then she was gone. "Oh, Samantha, what have you been up to now?" Paula sighed. "Nothing," said Samantha, getting where very near to her feet. "Well, nothing more than usual, anyway." Samantha knocked on her the familiar door and got it. She froze. She just stopped herself in time. Her parents were sitting gazing at her. <coughs> There was no sign of Miss Zolinski. Is that the kind of language you learn here? Asked her father. Samantha was about to den- deny it, but changed her mind. Yes, father. All the girls speak like that. Her mother sighed. Nice try, Samantha. She said, "Now have you got the keys for your mother and father? If that's what you want," Samantha said.
offhandedly. She got eight of them the breakfast case. She could manage and sat down away from him. We have come to find out why you haven't written to us, said her father. Samantha shrugged and studied the toes of her ponies' brown shoes. Miss Zonishan says she has given you any number of stamps, said Miss Stevens. So what have you been doing with them? I stuck them in an arbor. I'll take up a stamp collecting, said Samantha. It's all there is to do here at Cody's. Oh, Samantha, stop being stupid said her mother crossly. How are you getting along? Made any friends yet? Put in her father? No. What about Zanjoli? Said to Lingin. Her father skips kept trying. I can do the work, said Samantha. I'm so far behind the others that I'm out of sight. We well aware of that, said her mother. Miss Donation finds out that you won't even try to do the work. It's all to- totally different here, said Samantha. I can't understand anything. Her parents studied her for a moment. Then her father spoke. It's not going to work, Samantha, she said. This attitude only makes me more confident that we did the right thing sending you here. If you refuse to work, all that will happen is that you'll be put back a year. Why should you care if I would work or not? Samantha suddenly knows her temper. You got what you wanted, haven't you? Me out of the way. That's not fair, Samantha, says her father. Do you know why you were sent here? Anything you say, father, says Samantha. She could answer her what? Thank you for your com- for coming to visit me. I mean, on a Thursday, too. I bet you have to miss your goal. Peter Tiffin's face looked stricken without an- another word. He stood up and slapped the room, watching the door quietly. Samantha was watching him, her insides twitching, stopping herself running after him. Miss Stevens started to follow her husband, but stopped at the door and looked back at her daughter. Are you satisfied now? She said. I didn't say anything that was true, than true, said Samantha, standing up. He doesn't give a darn about me, Miss Stevens stood glaring at her daughter for a long moment. Then she brought her hand up and slapped her across the face. Samantha that fell back more in shock than pain. You have no idea how upset he is about all this, said her mother, angrier than Samantha had ever seen her before. No idea, Samantha. Just breaking his heart. When she went out, she left the door. Paula was waiting patiently in the corridor. She watched an as an upset. Mr. Stevens almost ran away up the corridor, followed by the even more dramatic exit of Miss Stevens. Stevens and sighed at the looks on her face. Sis Paula went quietly into the principal study. Samantha was sitting on the floor in a huddle, crying. She sat down beside her and put an arm around her. Come on now, Samantha, she said gently. It has it can't have been that bad. She hit me. But Samantha, my mother hit me. I expect you deserve it, said Paula. But my parents have ever hit me in my life, said Samantha. She wiped her lips across her eyes. They must really hit me. Oh don't talk much of rubbish, said Paula. If they did didn't care, they couldn't or even get upset. Chapter 14 Breaking the Ice At 7 o'clock on Friday, the 14th of February, excitement was running high at Stoke Demi Room. Marina stared one of the natural rooms with Jenna. She was sitting studying her cell in the dressing table mirror. She read for her lipstick and started to apply it carefully. I don't know why you are so down on her, says Jenna, who was still fussing, fussing with her hair over Mariona's shoulder. Ah, she sucked a whim, says Mariola, all this talk about her being a professional athlete. She's all right, you just like having someone to pick on. Yes, well, she better not be there tonight, that's all, 
says Mariana. Why? She won't affect you. No, Mariana eyed her in the mirror. What about when it comes to the dancing? What do, what do you mean? Think, think hard. Oh, you mean she's a trained dancer? That's right. She makes the rest of us look sick, said Mariana. Still, I don't think she got much to wear. Her parents only give her a couple of donuts a week on hours. Mariana fumbled in her drawer and brought out a cut glass perfume spray. It was nearly empty. Down, I'll have to get some more, she said. What, Channel No. 5? Yes. My mother will buy some for me when she comes down on Father's Day, said Mariola, spraying herself comprehensively. What the hell's that? laughed Jenna. It smells like a bag ass. Ah, oh, what is this? cried Mariola, coming to her feet. She nipped the spray, then it slid down perfume. Er, Jenna had bit right away and was holding a handkerchief to her nose. Have it gone back? Don't be so stupid, Jenna, no fine. Doesn't go back. Mariona was frantically staring, staring at her clothes. Careful of your dress, says Jenna. It's hardly matches, does it? Demanded Mariona. I can't wear it now. Oh, I have to have another shower. Wash my hair, everything. I don't understand. How is it happened? Someone's been at it, of course, says Mariona. Oh, you just wait till I get my hands on them. Jenna was struggling with the window. The smell was awful and it filled the room like a cloud. Mariona was struggling into her dress gown. Suddenly, she froze. Jen, she said in the horrified whisper, What am I going to wear? Samantha charmed her interest to perfection. She waited until the dance had begun and most of the male guests were there. The girls and the visitors were still eyeing on another up. Marina, trying to hide herself behind the short drinks table, was wearing her summer school dress. Everything else she had was either being laundered or knitted underneath, and Mariola was too big to borrow, borrow from any of the other girls. Suddenly, one of the double doors flew open, and Samantha was standing there, a demure smile on her face, a hush, a hush fell over the room as every eye turned in her direction. She stood there a minute for a full effect, then stood up shell constantly down the very center of the room. Gradually, the conversation picked up again, but, but now everybody kept glancing in her direction. Paula was helping serve the food punch. But he abandoned it and went over to Samantha. Hi, Paula, said Samantha. What are you nearing wearing? Sigh, Paula. Don't you like it? Samantha gave a strut. Samantha was dressed in a dance costume. That was so modern it was a red, made of some silvery material that glittered and flashed in the lights. It was so tight that it clung like a second skin. There was a light hole cut in the front of it, revealing a stomach as flat as a board that had every girl in the room hating her. Well, I like it, said Paula, and I'm sure every boy in the room does, but I should steer clear of Miss Robinson if I were you. Ah, what can she do? Samantha stops her head, really getting into the park. She can send you to train, said Paula. Samantha looked around to make sure no one was listening. I don't really care if she does. Now, she says sort of voice. I was only doing it to put Mariana's nose out joy. You done that all night, said Paula. Though it's a pity if you go just yet. There's a boy over there who definitely interested in you. In spite of herself, Samantha glanced around to see. He's quite good looking, says Paula. Hmm, says Samantha. He's all right, I suppose. Not really my type. Can I have some... Punch. Paula handed her a glass and she sipped it and made a fight. I don't suppose you got any skin. He said, don't try and be as sophisticated as you look, said Paula. Where did you get that outfit from, anyway? 
as an oral dance costume from a production I was in at dance school. Such a matter, I just had to let it out a bit. Pity you couldn't have let it out a bit more, he spoiled dryly. Er, er, here she comes. The boy has finally gathered up his courage and was coming over. Samantha Dobby hurriedly turned her back, but he wasn't put off. Wouldn't you like a dance? said a voice from behind. I don't mind, she said offhandedly. Someone's got to start them off, I suppose. They went out onto the empty floor. A slow dragon was breathing, so she put his arms around her shoulders and they did a slow waiting dance with everybody watching them. Will you come here often? He said after a minute. Now that is original, she said. Look, I'm trying, he said. Oh, you're dressed very conservatively. This Austin? said Samantha Erinic. No, none of the other girls seem to be dressed like that. No, well, I'm the principal's favorite, she said. She asked to see me virtually every day. That's nice, he said. What did you say your name was? I didn't, she said. But it's Natalia, Natalia Magadova. Natalia, that's Russian, isn't it? My name's Mikhail Barikliko. That's Russian as well, isn't it? She said. He danced in silence for a few moments. Then Samantha glanced up at him. There's just one thing I want to know. What is it? How did you get in, Alex? Walked. <laughs> what? <laughs> he said, I left my pride in some bushes outside the main gate and just follow the bus. All the stuff think I'm from the other school. Are you skipping an eye on me? A little, if you intend to go around dressed like that. I'll dress how I like. I'll like the best, she said, cross cross me. <laughs> Hi, he gave her shoulders a gentle slurk. I just came to be with you. That's all right, isn't it? Yes, yeah, sorry, she said quietly. I told you be pleased to see me. Of course I am, she said, giving him a small smile. He sighed. I need a dress like this to show the other girls. That's all. I was going to stay long. You're a free agent, Samantha, she said. You can do what you like. I know that, she said quickly. I wasn't justifying myself. I was just saying, that's all. Are you laughing at me? No, of course not. He read. Then as the musician, ah, that's better. That's quick. This not up. Alex couldn't dance last semester, but even so, his dance dance training put him much ahead of everybody else in the room. As and for us, for our semester, he'd been dancing since he was four, and her whole life was devoted to dance. They stood slightly apart, but more as one person, letting the music play through her their bodies. Totally not in there experience. Others found the courage to push her onto the floor, but Alex and Samantha was left in their own little space, a unit of brilliance in an average group. Finally, after a solid half hour that would have left an ordinary person exhausted, they were brought back to the earth when the music train tumbled again. They retreated to the drinks table. This end, Samantha whispered, "Still clear of the staff, will you?" Alex ran at the other end of the table, where the three teachers all had disapproving looks on their faces. What's through there? Alex nodded to the big open front window. That's the balcony. Says Samantha, "We are allowed to go outside with the boys as long as we stay on the balcony." She grinned and added, "Sure, cool." Our oh, daring, said Alex. The night to keep an eye on us. Hitler said unassembly that it was in case things go out of hand. I should have on to the school dance, said Alex. Things always get out of hand now. Say, did you know Toby's going out with Hilary Anderson? Oh, good for him, said Samantha. I didn't think he had the time. Why with his cooking and your paper route? He's a bit of a dull. Oh, our Toby, said Alex. She's that pretty girl from seventh grade, isn't her? Yes, I understand. He greatly admires her green boots. Green Alex, he told me she's the best patches maker in the seventh grade. Samantha hit him with her elbow. I'm glad he's got someone to spend time with him, she said. You're always using him. I'm not. He's a friend. 
Sir Alex indignantly, "Friend, do not want another favor." Absolutely," said Samantha. "So you can do me a favor if you like. I can hardly wait." Please, Alex, from me. She leaned forward and whispered in his ear. He frowned. But why? He said. I don't know, Samantha. It doesn't seem a very nice thing to do. A long life to earth is very important to me. You mean the girls over there who's been glaring at you all night? That's the one. He said. Well, I see. He said. But it won't have any effect anyway. Trust me, said Samantha. Then she gave him a sweet smile. I'll meet you up afterwards on the balcony. I'm、uh, going to call her. She stood up there, finishing his drink, watching as Samantha disappeared through the glass door. Then, making up his mind, he put down his glass and went over to where Marilla was leaning against the wall. "Hi," he said, trying to be original. "Oh,、uh, hello," says Marilla, taken aback. No one had bothered with her eye. Yes, that evening. "I do like a dance." "Well, I don't mind," she said. Taking a chance to get back at Samantha, Alex led her out onto the floor, which was now much more packed as things really got underway. The music was fast for two seconds. The snow dried down, and Alex could put his arms around her. Now they could talk. I haven't seen you at one of our dances before," says Miriam. "I haven't been to one," said Alex. "The lot bad. The music quite good, isn't it?" "Oh, I think it's awful," says Miriam. The voice more hoarded. I went to string fellows. Now that's more my kind of scene. They seem to know everybody in here. Whom said Alex, denying that Samantha wasn't drunk about this girl. She decided that now he could go through with it. There's a bit of a funny smell in here, though, isn't there? He said, "I can't smell anything." She said, stifling in his arms. No, he sniffed the air. It's a bit like bad ass. Bruno's almost screamed. She pulled away and sniffed at her arms, regarding him in horror. Then she bolted from the room. I stood here for a minute, stunned at her reaction. Hurriedly, she retreated to the balcony to get away from the mass of staring eyes. Samantha, who had been watching it all, gave him a, her first real smile of the evening. Oh, that was wonderful! She said. Yeah, would you like to explain? What it was all about? He asked. Oh, never mind. He said. It doesn't matter. She linked her hands behind his leg. Hey, he said. I told you came out here to quarrel. Alice. She asked seriously. That's the last thing I want to do.